Los Angeles to Las Vegas, usually a five hour nightmare in traffic, but soon you'll make that trip in just two hours and 10 minutes, gliding at 218 miles per hour. No traffic, no gas stops, no stress. And here's the wild part. It's not Japan, not China. It's America's first real bullet train under construction right now and ready by 2028. Let's be honest about something embarrassing. While Japan built bullet trains in the 1960s, yes, the 1960s, and while China constructed 28,000 miles of high-speed rail in just 15 years, America has been stuck driving on highways and flying on short routes that should never require an airplane. We've talked about high-speed rail for decades. We've made promises. We've even started projects. But until now, we've never actually finished one. Here's what's different this time. In the desert between Los Angeles and Las Vegas, massive construction crews are working on something called Brightline West. This train will travel at 186 miles per hour, faster than a NASCAR race. It will move 11 million passengers every year between two of America's busiest destinations. And the cost? $12 billion. That's roughly what Americans spend on gasoline in just one week. But speed isn't even the most interesting part. Think about what happens when you remove 700,000 car trips from one of America's most congested highway corridors every single year. The Interstate 15 between Los Angeles and Vegas is a parking lot on weekends. This train could empty it. So why is this happening now after decades of false starts? Three massive forces came together at exactly the right moment. First, the money finally arrived. The Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act pumped $66 billion specifically into rail projects. But here's the brilliant part. Brightline West is not waiting for government funding alone. It's a private company building this with $3 billion in federal grants plus $8 billion in private investment and bonds. They're not asking permission. They're not waiting for politicians to agree. They're building it. Compare that to California's high-speed rail project, which has been stuck in political quicksand for 16 years, with costs exploding from $33 billion to over $100 billion. That project became a cautionary tale about what happens when you let perfect become the enemy of done. Second, the route is perfect. This isn't some complicated path through mountains and cities with endless property battles. It's mostly empty desert along an existing highway corridor. The government already owns much of the land through the Interstate 15 right of way. No lengthy court battles, no buying out hundreds of homeowners, just build. Las Vegas to Los Angeles is also one of the busiest short haul flight routes in America. People make this trip constantly for business, entertainment and weekend getaways. You're not creating demand, it already exists. You're just offering a better option. Third, and this is crucial, China scared us, not with military threats, with infrastructure. When American lawmakers visited China and saw bullet trains moving at 217 miles per hour, while our Amtrak trains crawled at 65 miles per hour on the same routes we've used since 1920, it created what one senator called infrastructure embarrassment. China's high-speed rail network now covers a distance equivalent to circling the entire Earth. Meanwhile, America's fastest train, the Acela, only hits 160 miles per hour on a tiny stretch of track in Rhode Island and Massachusetts, and averages much slower speeds for most of its route because the infrastructure is ancient. Here's where the story gets really interesting. Siemens just opened a $60 million factory in upstate New York specifically to build high-speed trains for American railways. Think about what happened. For decades, America stopped manufacturing passenger trains. We bought them from France, Germany, Japan, anywhere but here. The skills disappeared, the factories closed. We became completely dependent on imports for something as fundamental as trains. Now that's reversing. The Siemens factory in Horseheads, New York, will produce the Valaro train sets the same design that powers high-speed networks across Europe. These aren't experimental. They're proven technology that's carried billions of passengers safely at speeds exceeding 186 miles per hour. The facility will employ hundreds of American workers building trains specifically designed for American conditions, wider cars for American expectations of space, different safety systems to meet Federal Railroad Administration requirements, climate control systems designed for the extreme desert heat between Los Angeles and Vegas. Once you have a factory producing high-speed trains, once you have workers who know how to build them, once you have engineers who understand the technology, you've created the foundation for an entire network. Brightline is not stopping at Las Vegas. They're already planning routes from Los Angeles to San Diego and throughout Florida, where they already operate the country's only privately owned intercity passenger railroad. Texas is watching closely with plans for a Dallas-Houston line. The Northeast Corridor is desperate for upgrades. Let's zoom out and look at what changes when this train starts running in 2028. 
The economic shift is massive. Las Vegas casinos and hotels are salivating over this. Right now, if you're in Los Angeles and want a Vegas weekend, you're either sitting in traffic for five hours or paying for a flight, rental car, and parking. The friction is real. Many people just don't bother. Cut that to two hours on a train where you can work, drink, relax, and arrive directly in the middle of the Vegas Strip. Suddenly, a day trip becomes reasonable. A weekend becomes spontaneous. Business meetings become easier. The accessibility transforms the relationship between these cities. The environmental impact is staggering. One bullet train replaces roughly 700,000 car trips annually. That's 400,000 tons of carbon emissions eliminated, equivalent to taking 86,000 cars off the road permanently. In a state that's fighting catastrophic wildfires, partly driven by climate change, this matters. But the psychological shift might be the biggest change. For three generations, Americans have assumed cars and planes are the only serious options for travel. We built our entire transportation system around this assumption. Trains became something you took for novelty or tourism, not serious travel. When the Brightline West starts moving passengers at 186 miles per hour through the Mojave Desert, millions of Americans will experience something Asia and Europe have known for decades. There's a better way to move between cities than sitting in traffic or dealing with airport security. That experience changes expectations. Suddenly, people in Texas start asking why they're sitting in traffic between Dallas and Houston when a train could do it faster. People in the Southeast start wondering why there's no fast connection between Atlanta and Charlotte. The entire conversation shifts. But let's be realistic about the challenges, because they're significant. Building through the desert sounds easy until you understand desert conditions. Summer temperatures hit 120 degrees Fahrenheit. That heat warps metal rails. It expands and contracts materials. The trains need cooling systems that can handle extreme heat while moving at 186 miles per hour. Japan's bullet trains operate in snow. Europe's trains run through rain. This route faces challenges neither system was designed for. Then there's the California earthquake reality. High-speed rail through seismically active regions requires technology that can detect earthquakes and stop trains within seconds. Japan perfected this after decades of development. America is adapting it for the San Andreas Fault and dozens of other active fault lines. The engineering is possible, but it's not simple. The real test comes with operational costs. Building the train is the exciting part. Running it profitably for 50 years is the hard part. Brightline needs to fill seats consistently, maintain expensive equipment, and compete with cheap gas prices and Southwest Airlines flights that cost $49 during off-peak times. Florida's Brightline gives us a preview. It's been successful, but it took years to build ridership and faced constant skepticism. The Las Vegas route has huge advantages. It's a shorter distance, a more popular destination, and worse, highway traffic. But success isn't guaranteed. And here's the uncomfortable truth. One accident could destroy public support. High-speed rail is statistically safer than driving, but psychology doesn't work on statistics. If something goes wrong at 186 miles per hour, the media coverage will be intense. Japan's bullet trains have carried 10 billion passengers with zero fatalities in 60 years. America needs to match that safety record, and we have far less experience. Imagine this succeeds beyond expectations. Imagine the Brightline West opens in 2028 and it's packed. Imagine people love it. Imagine it makes money. What comes next changes everything. Texas is already planning the Dallas-Houston line with similar technology. That's 240 miles that currently takes three and a half hours by car through some of America's worst traffic. A bullet train would do it in 90 minutes. Transportation planners and economists who've studied this route believe it could reshape the entire corridor. Their forecasts suggest thousands of new jobs tied to construction and operations, rising property values near station locations and new business clusters forming around access points. Studies project this kind of connectivity could encourage greater regional cooperation between Dallas-Fort Worth's 8 million people and Houston's 7 million people. But here's the crucial part, this is not automatic. The vision of these cities functioning as one interconnected mega-region is exactly that, a vision. It requires decades of sustained investment, local policies that support transit-oriented development, and market forces that actually reward proximity to stations. Japan didn't create its mega-regions overnight. It took 40 years of continuous operation and urban planning that worked with the trains, not against them. The Southeast Corridor from Atlanta to Charlotte could move 15 million people annually. The Pacific Northwest, from Seattle to Portland to Vancouver, could become a single economic unit. The Northeast Corridor, which already carries 12 million passengers on slow trains, could triple that with genuine high-speed service. But here's where it gets interesting. 
If America commits to high-speed rail the way China did, we're not just talking about connecting cities, we're talking about potentially reshaping where Americans choose to live. Though this depends entirely on how well we execute. Right now, you can't live in Las Vegas and work in Los Angeles. The commute is impossible, but a two-hour train ride? Experts studying commuter behavior suggest that opens possibilities. Housing affordability in expensive coastal cities could get a release valve if people choose to live in lower cost areas and commute to high wage jobs. Whether Americans will actually do this at scale, that's the experiment we're about to run. The same pattern could repeat everywhere high-speed rail connects cities, though success isn't guaranteed. Tokyo and its surrounding areas house 38 million people, partly because bullet trains make it possible to live 60 miles away and commute comfortably. But Tokyo also spent 60 years building dense housing near stations, creating walkable neighborhoods and making car ownership expensive and difficult. American cities would need to make similar choices. The train alone doesn't create the transformation, it creates the opportunity. So here's what's really at stake with this train. It's not about getting to Vegas faster, it's about whether America can still build big things, whether we can look at a challenge and solve it, instead of studying it to death. For 60 years, we've watched other countries build high-speed rail while we made excuses. Too expensive, not practical. Americans love their cars, we've heard it all. Now we're finally building one, in the desert, at 186 miles per hour, opening in 2028. But what happens after that? Do we build 10 more routes, or do we declare victory, pat ourselves on the back, and go back to sitting in traffic? The train is coming. The real question is, where does it take us? Let us know what you think in the comments section. If you think this train is massive, wait until you see what OpenAI is building right now, the largest mega project in US history. It's something so big, it could redefine what technology even means for America. Click watch next to see that video. Thank you for watching.